All right, so uh, let's get started. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, let me introduce you to Stacey Roshan again. This is her third installment with us. Uh, she's going to be talking about Kami software and using it with a Wacom tablet. So we're super excited about that. As you know, Stacy is the Director of Innovation and Education and Technology at the Bullis School in Potomac, Maryland. And she is also a calculus teacher and author of the book, Tech with Heart, which is a very great book. So you can pick it up at Amazon if you want and read it. It's a lot of fun. Got some really interesting tidbits in there about uh, teaching and math and all that cool stuff. So Stacy is going to be showing us a little bit about uh, Cami and how it encourages students and teachers to be interactive and give the ability to annotate and edit PDFs, eBooks, worksheets, all that kind of cool stuff. So Stacy, take it away. Uh, thank you, Doug, for that warm introduction. And thank you to everybody who's tuned in. Um, and I'm really excited to share some ways to get started with Cami and really using it with digital inking and the power of the collaboration that can happen in Kami, which is something that I really love. It's just easy, works well. Um, and so let's get started. So I'm going to show the various different uh, Wacom devices that I typically recommend. And it's hard to say this is the one you should get because it kind of depends on what you're looking for. So I would start with what's your priority. If you're looking for a wireless solution, then we got your answer. If you need it to be wireless, then the Wacom Intuos is the one for you. So this is the Wacom Intuos tablet. And this one is, there's a Bluetooth version. You wanna make sure that you're looking at the Bluetooth version. This is a small size right here. Um, and it's great, it's portable, it's lightweight, you can move it around the room, but it is one where it's the blank slate style. So think of this as like a mouse pad, except you can write with a pen. So if I'm writing at the top left, I'm like writing at the top left of my screen, writing at the bottom right, writing at the bottom right, right of my screen. So it's just like my screen, wherever I'm drawing is where it's gonna come up on my screen. But I do have to look up at my computer to know where I'm writing. So if you're in the classroom walking around, you would just wanna be projecting on the projector in the classroom, and then you would look up at the projector to see where you're writing. There's a little bit of learning curve. I usually tell people it's about a month to get used to writing with this thing, but after you do and you practice it, it's really seamless, and it's a really nice, nice writing experience on this. So this is the Wacom Intuos, and if you wanna be moving around the classroom, that's one I recommend. Now, the next one I'm going to show is the same size, pretty much. Well, there's different sizes. You can get the medium size or you can get the small. And I'm showing you the small. So these are the same size. But I'm going to show you now, this is the Wacom One, or the One by Wacom tablet. And this is the one with a red backing. So this one is Chromebook compatible. So if you need a tablet that is Chromebook compatible, this is the one to go with. Now, I don't have it plugged in at this moment just because I wanted to just be able to show it more easily, but this one does need to be plugged in. So that's something to keep in mind. It's small, portable, works the same as the Intuos, but this one does need to be plugged in. If you're able to get some devices into the hands of your students, this is my, this is what I would recommend. It's the lowest price point option that you can get in the tablets. The last one I'm going to show, which is the one that I love using with Cami and the one that I use the most often um, is the one with the display, which is the Wacom One. So this is the Wacom One. And as you can see, I have uh, mirrored whatever you're seeing on the screen onto my Wacom One. And this is just easy because, you know, I can see what I'm writing as I'm writing. I can see it on this screen. It can be a second screen if you need a second monitor. And it's much larger. So this is 13 inches. I uh, will hold it up with the other one that I was showing so you can see. This is just the fraction of the size. Um, so... This is the one that I love using, the Wacom One with the um, with Cami. And so th the reason that I recommend that one is the Wacom One is the lowest price point for the display style tablets. And it 
exceeds all of my as a math teacher. The handwriting experience is brilliant, feels great. Um, it's simple, but you do have to plug it in. So that's just something I want to share that you have to plug it in. As you can see in the picture, you have to plug it in actually to the wall and you have two cords going into your computer. You have an HDMI and a USB cable. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, so I got a couple questions last time. So I want to make sure that I say it this time, if you have like a Mac, like I have, and it only has USB-C ports, you can easily get a hub um, from Amazon for $20 or less that allows you to plug all these ports easily into your computer. So it's not a problem with being able to plug things in. It's just that there are some wires that you need to be able to plug and you need to be able to plug into a wall. So those are the things to keep in mind as you're deciding on which Wacom tablet is best for you. And we're gonna have time for Q&A at the end if you have more questions about which tablet will best fit your needs. But let me start with why I started using Kami. So I started using Kami several years back when I started teaching a purely online version of my AP Calculus class. And I needed a way for students to easily be able to submit their work to me and then for me to be able to give them feedback on their work. And I needed to be able to annotate any of the solutions that they had turned in. So they would turn in their work. They usually just did a PDF of their work. And I wanted an easy way to be able to give them feedback. And so I was already using Google everything um, in my teaching. I was having students submit a scanned piece of work. Um, because students were just doing their work usually on a piece of paper. And so they would scan it in, but then I wanted to just be able to ink it up. And I didn't want to have to like download the file and re-upload the annotations and you know, all that passing back and forth. It's a mess. So instead, what I had students do was just submit it to Google Drive. If you're using Google Classroom, you can do the same thing. Kami works with a lot of learning management systems. It has an integration so students can turn in directly. Then all I do is I open up the PDF in Kami. As you can see, I'm doing in the screenshot, I just right click on the document. So I'm going to do it right now. And then open with, and you open with Kami, you just add this install at once. And then I have all of the inking tools. So I can draw anywhere on my PDF and I also have commenting features. So I'm gonna show you exactly how this works in just a moment. I wanted to give you an overview first, but one thing to keep in mind is that um, some of these features are free and some of them are paid. And I'm going to talk more about the free versus the paid features in a couple of slides. So the first thing that I'm gonna just show is I thought that I would just go with, instead of showing a PDF, because I showed that in this screenshot, I'm gonna show how you can ink up even your Google Slides. So let me take you over to Kami and say you wanna make something more of an instructional video. So you can just go into Kami, open from Google Drive, and then say I have some Google Slides that I wanna use for this lesson. All right, so I have, to find this specific presentation so we can just be looking at this one so it was in google slides and i'm just going to click on it that's it and then i'm going to select it and it's going to pull it into cami it kind of piece it okay so now it's like flattened i wouldn't have my animations anymore and i wouldn't be able to edit, but it pulls it in and now i'm going to be able to ink it up so some, a lot, okay, so many questions. How can I annotate my Google Slides? This is one way to do that. You start in Google Slides and then you import it into Kami, just like this. And now at this point, now I have all of my drawing tools. So I can use my drawing tool. I usually like to like pick three pen colors that I wanna use in my presentation so I don't have to like be skipping back and forth. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna use blue. I'm going to use, um, okay, those are going to be my, my colors now. So now if I have a slide like this one, and I'm going to be writing on um, my Wacom One right now, okay? So I'm going to just be drawing on this. So that's how I have my pen tool instead of drawing with my mouse. And so as I'm, oops, as I'm writing, you can see 
don't know what's going on. It's not writing for me right now. Well, my thing just disconnected. Okay, so we'll just say, as I'm writing, now I'm writing with my mouse, so that's a mess, but I'm gonna reconnect this in a second. You can see how I can just write anywhere on the screen, and I can also change the pen thickness, just like that, if I need a thicker pen. Um, I can, you know, kind of highlight as I'm talking. And I think there's real power here. Um, I know there's real power. My students tell me all the time in writing and talking. So any type of presentation that you're doing, as you can kind of highlight and point and guide students as you're talking through and giving the instruction, it's so helpful for that clarity. And so all these drawing tools are available right here. You can change the transparency if you want it to be a little bit more transparent and kind of work as a highlighter more like that. So that's something that's nice to know also. Um, and then what's really great is this commenting tool. So this one is a, this next thing I'm going to show you is a paid feature. The drawing was free, but one of the paid features is a screen capture. And what that can do is I can click anywhere. Let's go to a new one. I'm going to show you how to whiteboard and screen capture in one. Click here, and then I can just choose, let me get myself out of the corner. So I'm gonna just choose this screen right here. And now I am actually creating a screencast as I'm talking. So here we go. Let's showcase how to solve this problem for our students, and then press done. And as you can see, it creates. And now I'm actually creating a screencast as I'm talking. So here we go. It creates that screen recording right there, right in Cami. And you can make it full screen so that you know students could pop it open and they could watch the whole video. So one way that I love to do this is like you can make a answer key with all your problems from class and then maybe make a video solution but make a video pointing to each one so say that you had a bunch of like documents like this you could make a screen recording to this one and then you would make the little dot there how about instead of a screen recording i'll just show you how it works with a voice comment because i haven't shown you that one here is how you solve problem one and then you can make one next to problem two here is how you solve problem two. Maybe you want to change the color of the dot. Here is how you solve problem number three. And so all of this can be done with one tool and it is now I can share it with students with a link. I can share it view only, or I can share it to give them editing access also. If I want it to be interactive, it works just like any other Google tool. So there's so many things you can do with this Cami document. I just showed how you can pull in and start with the Google Slides as your base, but you could do that with a Google Doc. You could do that with any PDF and you have all of these tools. So again, if you want to make like a worksheet for your students, fill in the blank, they can use the text box tool and they can type. Obviously I was highlighting here, um, but you can change all of this with the formatting tools up here. So you can choose if you want it to be highlighted or not highlighted. You can change the font color just like that. Um, so clear, just like that. So that's an overview of what Cami does. Highlight, write, draw, and even screen record, audio record all in one. So let me go back. So the other thing that I did want to show is like more of just like a whiteboarding style video. What if you want to get started with just like there's nothing there and you just want a purely whiteboard style video or even in your classroom you want to do a screen share and totally whiteboard style. You can do that too. So if I go back to let me just go back to camiapp.com 
and then you just sign in and I sign in with my Google account so everything's synced with my Google Drive, which is also wonderful here for me. Backs everything up, saves everything. And what I can do is do a new blank page. You can choose if you want it to be like a grid page, lined page, and for a whiteboard style, I'm gonna do a blank page. So you can choose just a blank page. And then you might want to have, in this case, you might wanna have the board kind of, you know, different orientation. So you can actually do that by going to the menu over here and you can rotate the page. And then you can go ahead and pull out your drawing tools and now you can just make your instructional video here. So I can be writing if I wanna do that over a screen share or if I want it to be more of a screencast, then all you do is you set up your scene, you press the comment button, you go to screen capture, you click anywhere on the page, I already have demoed that to you, and you can create the screen capture, screen recording, and you can be writing all in one. And again, I think the power here is that you're writing and you're talking and as you're writing, you're talking and it's a very organic process and students can follow what you're saying as you're writing. And I love that. So that's how easy it is. Say that you need more pages, no problem. You can add more pages to the bottom so that you could have more retail space. Maybe one page wasn't enough. So I can add a second page. I can choose what orientation I want again. Um, and even if you have like an image that you wanna pull in, that you wanna mark up on top of, you can go to add media. You can pull in something from your computer that you have. You can pull in something from Google Drive or we can just do a Google image search and um, let's just find something happy right now. So you can pull in any image that you want. You can place it you can resize it, and you can draw on top of it, just like so. So um, this can work with, again, any image that you have. If you have student work that you wanted to like take a picture of, that's something else that works really well right now, to have a picture of a piece of student work that maybe was submitted, maybe you took a screenshot of it, and then you can pull it into the Cami so that you can mark it up and give feedback. You can give feedback with voice, you can give feedback through the screen capture tool that we've talked about, or you can just do some written feedback. So all those things are possible in this one tool. Now, the next example that I wanna show you is kind of like one way that I'm using it, um, that I've used it in online teaching. You can use this really nicely in remote teaching if you have a Wacom tablet, but your students don't, for example, which I know is the case in many classrooms right now. And so what students can do is they can just upload the screenshot of their work where they got stuck. So like I had problem one written here and I had the problem. And then students, three students in this example, would have gotten stuck. And so what they did was they went over to the Cami document, just like this, and they pulled in their screenshot. So how do they do that? They go to add media and then they pull it in from my computer. If they're on their phone, then they can just take the snapshot right on their phone and it imports it into the Cami. And then what you can do as a teacher, like I'm writing here, is that you can write and talk. And so this would be a case where I would have everybody upload their work. I would have people work for, students work for maybe five minutes and then say, all right, let's pause and bring it to the board. And when I say bring it to the board, I say, I mean like bring it to my screen share or bring it to the board at the front of the room where I'm able to write with my Wacom tablet and I'm able to go step by step through where the student made an error so that we can discuss it. And in a lot of cases, my goal here is that a student is actually talking at this point and expressing where they see an error in their classmates work and by them talking then i can be writing 
as they're talking so that again, I can get to my visual learners, I can get to my learners who are more auditory, all the different types, we can be kind of pulling that work. A lot of times when some a student in the room is just talking and even though they're saying everything correct, it's hard for everybody in the class to pay attention or follow with math work. I know this is the case all the time because it's like, wait, what step are you talking about? But I can easily just pull in full and say, okay, yeah, so, so talking about this step right here and just point it out. Okay, okay, well, we made an error from this step to this step. This is where the error was made. And so something as simple as that can help guide the student's eye. And then we, as I was writing here, let's discuss why this is incorrect. And I can write it out. Again, writing and talking in real time is very powerful. We know that as teachers, that's why we love writing on the whiteboard. How can we make this digital? And the other power of this is that on my whiteboard, at the end of class, I erase it. But here, it's all saved. So it is all saved, and I can share this as easy as backed up to my Google Drive, as I said before, love that. And then share the document. I can share it with editing privileges, or I can share it if I want to just share it after class as like an answer key um, or notes for students to just look at words i can share it with just viewing only permission and then students wouldn't be able to write on it any editing would obviously have a distinction so that's how it works let's get into the different pricing plans because i do want to explain how that works so with a free account you have access to a lot of the tools so like i said the drawing tool the highlighting tool those are all free features and even the text comments they are free features so this is what you have for free you even have shapes but with the teacher plan that will give you access to an equation editor um te text to speech video comments which is what i was showing you no i was actually showing you the screen capture the video comments would be a video comment would be just me talking to the webcam but screen capture is really really nice because i can make my video like my my flip classroom video or an answer key with a video and i'm writing it all out all in one tool i don't need to like use loom or some other type of screencastify any of that all in one. The insert images is another paid feature. So I was showing you that we use that in my classroom. That is a paid feature for students to be able to insert their images. And then voice comments are also a paid feature. Also Google Classroom integration, that's also paid. So a lot of these features are paid for an upgrade but i'll tell you i started with the free i was using the free for a couple of years and just being able to handwrite on any pdf and use a text tool is huge so um that's you know you can get started with that and i actually have a four month upgrade code if you would like to use it um if you haven't used cami before you can use this upgrade code so you would just go to cami.app slash Hero Stacy, and you would get four months of Cami teacher from whenever you started this. So go ahead, save this. Um, you'll have access to these slides. Hopefully they're in the Zoom chat already. You can take a screenshot of this slide, but you can get going. Um, this would take you pretty much to the end of the school year, right? Um, if you're interested in trying out Cami. So again, it, it, it does work with um, Microsoft schools also, but I am a Google user, so I'm gonna just tell you what I know. Um, so you just install the driver from, or sorry, you install the add-on from Google Drive, and that's it. So this works on PCs, Macs, Chromebooks, everything. You just install it, and by installing it, that was when I was showing you before how you can right-click on any file and open in Cami anything you have in your Google Drive. Once you install this add-on, that's it. So you can just Google like um, Cami add-on and you would be able to find how to do this. There's a lot of information on the Cami page as well to get you started. So the next thing that I wanna talk about, which is super powerful is collaboration. So here's an example where I'm gonna say me and student are together. So this could be for tutoring, one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions, small group work, 
or even students working remotely and collaboratively. As you can see, I kind of have the split screen, but this would be like two different screens. So even if I'm, you know, at school and my student is at home, it would work just identical to what you're seeing on my screen here. And so you can see how real time this all works with two accounts logged in here. And so students can be using those pen tools. They could be, this is a very simple addition problem, obviously, here, but they can be writing out their thinking process. They can be working together. So maybe they're in a Zoom call together, they're working together, or you're in a Zoom call with just one student. And, you know, one of the big problems it, right now is like, how do we mimic that, like looking over a student's shoulder so that we can help them revise their work in real time? And so this is such a powerful way to be able to do that. Um, if you're not on a Zoom call together and you're kind of doing this more asynchronously, um, you can see that you could just use the comment tools like I've used here. So you might comment like, ah, please try this problem again. And then when your student revises that work, then they could comment back, oh, I understand, I got it. And it would trigger a notification for you that you knew that the student had made a revision to their work. But again, this can work in all different classroom settings. As I'm showing you here, this can work great for the elementary school setting, all the way up to how I've used it in my AP Calculus classroom. Um, and so here, of course, the students are using the pen tool to just do some simple addition problems. Um, so I really love that for a variety of different classes. Like we are using this across the board. It doesn't, I know I'm just showing you a math example, but foreign language, this has been amazing for our foreign language classrooms using the audio. I'll just show you how that works one more time because the audio has been really game changer for them. So you can leave an audio comment. You can even have students do a read aloud to see if they're able to read it well. Again, foreign language, that's very important. And then as a teacher, you can reply back to them. And you can even use voice typing tool. So, you know, if you would rather just talk it out, I'll show you how it works. Hello, so you can see how well this works. That worked pretty well, didn't it? Um, of course, you can edit it if you need to and then enter to submit that. So that can be a way to have you, the student has voice. Here's how you solve problem number three. And then you can reply back as a text comment. If you wanted to reply back with voice, then you would just start and launch a new voice comment and you could kind of put it next to theirs. And then you could reply with like a voice comment. Voice is really nice for adding some emotion um, and, you know, just in a remote setting, that's particularly nice. Something else that's nice for a little bit of that personal touch is sometimes just like adding a little sticker and Cami also has some stickers built in here that can be fun and just give you know a little bit of love to them what is this one? Oh, this one's a happy valentine's day one but they have little stickers you know emojis can be really helpful right now to just like to help students know that like mistakes are okay um you know, we are giving them feedback and we're giving them corrections, but mistakes are okay. Mistakes are part of the learning process. Another thing um, that it has, which I showed as a paid feature, is the text-to-speech. So it does read aloud. Getting started. And you can change the speed. Getting started. You can also change the voice. Um, and as you could tell, like this was something that I pulled in from Google Slides. So what Cami has is OCR recognition, which basically means that it takes all of the things or even images on your page and it recognizes it as text so that it will read aloud anything. I wonder if it will read aloud this page. I'm not sure. Let's try it. Not sure if it'll read this page because this was really just a graphic here. No, but this one, it would. Upgrade code, four months of commie teacher, commie app, here, ostracy. So 
that's really nice as an accessibility tool and accessibility feature. Um, and you can go previous sentence, next sentence, you can loop it, you can play, stop again, Changing the voice can be very helpful to help students pick the voice that best meets their needs. And then the speed, they can really customize that speed for whatever they need in reading slower or faster. Um, so those are those basic tools that are available there. Oh, and a dictionary is here too as an accessibility tool. Um, so I'm going to move over to discussion time um, and see what other questions you have. I have some more demos ready if we don't have too many questions, but I wanted to open it up and see what people on the call needed. So I'm gonna go with discussion and then um, I think we'll have some extra time and I have a couple more examples that I can show. Yep, we have a few questions, Stacy. So right. um, uh, first one's from Jim, he's asking, uh, yeah, about the kind of differences between Kami and Pear Deck and when you would use one over the other. Awesome question. So Pear Deck is great for individual student work. So if I want to ask one question where everybody in the class is, um, so like, I guess I didn't have a good example here, but if I wanted to ask, question one, and I want to be able to see all student work in one dashboard view, then I'm going to be using Pear Deck. Because what Pear Deck allows me to do is ask one question and then see all the different responses of all my different students. So I would see all of them written in one kind of like slide. Whereas Kami, it works well for collaborative work. So student collaboration for students to be able to write together and see what each other is writing because Pear Deck is just individual. Um, so, you know, if Sam is writing on his Pear Deck, then Sam's only going to see his work. And then until I do a screen share and project all those responses in the Pear Deck uh, teacher or the Pear Deck projector view in my class. Whereas a Kami document is like all of us writing together. I would say very similar to Google Doc where we're all writing together and working together to complete one task. So we're all writing on top of each other and we're all writing together. Um, as well, students, you could have each student do an individual cami, which I do sometimes. I share it so that each student ha makes their own copy. Again, just like a Google Doc, where you know how you share it and then each student makes their own copy before they get started. So you can do the same exact thing in cami the thing is, is that as a teacher, I need to now have, if I have 15 students, I need to have 15 different tabs open to monitor how all 15 students are doing. Sometimes that's great. Sometimes that's what I need because, for example, I want students all working on like, you know, like I have one activity and I want them to just be able to move through the slides easily and I want them to be able to use the drawing and the voice and the text box. I want them to be able to use all these different tools then I would make it a cami, and that would normally be for like a, a larger homework assignment. In the classroom, if I want to do a quick warm up and a temperature check and see how everybody in the class is doing, that's when I'm using Pear Deck. So that was a very involved answer, but it's kind of an involved question. Yeah, no, I think you answered it well. Yeah, because uh, even I was asking you about that the other day. So uh, yeah, that's great. Thanks. Uh, Phoebe is asking if um, you or other teachers are using uh, Kami as a lecturing tool, either obviously remotely or uh, real time. Yeah, definitely. So um, in the classroom, so let's just start with like a lecturing tool as like making a video ahead of time. So if I wanted to make like a flipped classroom video, the way I normally start is I'll start by making a PowerPoint or a Google Slides, and I usually just have like um, the question and then a lot of links. I think I actually had it on this slide here. Nope, this one. So I usually have it like this. Let me change the orientation so that you don't have to tilt your head. Okay, so just like this, um, and then I was drawing all over it. So excuse my annotations here. But um, 
I would just pull in my PowerPoint and that's what I did in this case. So you can import it, I was showing you before that you can import it by opening with, should I show that again? Maybe I should. I guess if I'm asking myself, then I should. Let me go back. Let me show you step by step. So if you had your PowerPoint, because I didn't show the PowerPoint example, I just showed Google Slides. So let me show the PowerPoint example. Sign in. And then after it loads. So the last one I didn't show you was that you can actually open from your computer. So if you have your PowerPoint on your computer, you can open it from your computer. I don't have my PowerPoint here right now. And then it would load up your PowerPoint and it would pull it in just like this. And so what I do is I have the question and then this was all blank space here. Um, I guess I wrote and so it's all in there now, but that would allow me to create the screen capture so that I could send a video home for students to watch. So that's how I would recommend just making like, if you want a very easy way to get started with making flipped classroom videos or little videos that students watch for homework before they walk into class, this is the way to go. Um, and you can be writing and talking and solving the problem as you're writing. In the classroom, same thing goes. You can just pull this in and then you can be writing and talking as you go so you can solve the problem. And I think, again, I just think there's so much power in that writing and talking at the same time. It's just like me saying right now, like, should I show you what I pressed to open the PowerPoint? If I just described to you that I went to Cami and I pressed the upload button and I pulled in my, my PowerPoint, it's not as powerful as like clicking the actual button. The same thing goes here. It's hard for you to follow how I solve this problem unless I'm actually writing the next step out. And as I do that, then you can follow kind of my work and you know, I can describe it as I'm writing, I can do the actual problem out so that my students can take notes. So I just think there's so and writing with your tablet as you're talking um, instead of like kind of pre-doing all the slides. Um, and so this works great for instruction in the classroom um, also in the same way. And if you just want the blank whiteboard, that was how I showed that you can have the blank white page. So hopefully that answers that. Yeah, I think that was a, that was a good job. Um, Phoebe had another question uh, asking if one can show two web pages at the same time in Cami. Is that possible? Um, I don't really know. So like you could have two tabs open and you could have like your two different things open. And then another thing that you could do, um, cause a lot of times like I want it side by side, like I was showing in this demo. And so how I do that is I actually just make, I can't show you right now because I'm just showing my one application window, but you can just open up a new Chrome window and the, have two windows and kind of place them side by side. So that would be my recommendation. That's how I made this one here. I just had one Chrome window on this side and another Chrome window on this side. I literally just pressed like file new window and then resized them side by side. Do we have any other questions? Okay. Uh, can can students collaborate? Uh oh, you're going in and out. I just heard something about collaborate. Can yeah, can you can you hear me? Uh, yeah, somebody was asking if students can also collaborate, not just teacher to teacher to student, but student to student. Yeah, that's a great question. So yes, absolutely. Um, all the features that are available in Cami are actually available to students also. If you have a Google Classroom integration, then you can turn off some of the features, but otherwise they're all accessible um, to students in the same way that they're accessible to teachers. And so what I actually have is I have a bunch of, um, if you have this presentation, which it should be in the chat in, in Zoom that you should have, the all of these slides 
Um, I have some getting started tutorials and one of them is a student tutorial. So student tutorial collaborate with my group members in Cami. So you could check that out um, or you can even share it with your students if that would be helpful. But basically they can do the same thing. So this is, I'm gonna just show you what I have students do. So I have them go to Cami um, just like I go to. They go to it and when you upgrade as a teacher you would be able to get licenses to um, onboard all the students in your class also so you would just give them a little code and they would type in the code at the beginning and then they would get started so you would just have that available um, to your students also so then they go to cami.com and then maybe they start with a new blank page so i usually have one person in the group get started so they go like this they start the document. Then I have them title it. So let's title it. Sample. And then what I have them do is first step, invite their partner. So they save their work. Save now. Just make sure it's saved. And then share the document. And then I would set it to editor so that they can collaborate with their partner, and then copy. And then all I have their partner, and then the, like if they're in the chat box or however they're working together, then they can share this link with their partner, and then their partner is now on to the same Cami document. So that's all. I have one person start the Cami, and then they would share this link with one partner, any of the people in their group, and that's it to get going. Um, and then this is the last button here, which I should point out, the create individual copy. That's how you could do it if you want to create a copy for every student in your classroom, then you would just give them that link and then it would force copy to each student. So instead of it being editing everybody on one collaborative document, each student in this case would get their own. But to answer your question about collaboration with students, they would use editor, again, copy this Cami link, share it with their partner, and then they're both on the same document and they can work together. Okay, those were some great questions. So, um, all right. So let me just go through a couple of other features that are really nice. Um, so, you know, when students are collaborating, a lot of times you wanna know who's done which piece of the work. So if you click on this sidebar right here, you can actually see the annotation summary and you can see who did what uh, i'm annotating on my own document here but i can even it's like a history i can see who did what and when they did what so that's a nice feature to have also and so how i got to that again was right in the sidebar so oops click the wrong button right here in the sidebar you can toggle that sidebar on and that would allow you to see all your different slides you can have different views. That's this one right here. And you can see who did what edits. So that is a very nice feature. As well, you can see if I had multiple people on this document, I would be able to see their little avatar in the bottom right. So I'd be able to see who's online right now. So if I had a group project, I'd be able to see who else is working and I could chat them right in Cami actually, if I have multiple people on this document. So um, this search, it allows you to find anywhere in the document, anything that you had written. So if I had like screen, it finds it. That's a really nice feature. Even if you pull in a big PDF file, you'll have that searchability right here. So that's that tool right there. This is syncing it up to Google Drive. Um, the next thing that I want to show is a split and merge feature. So sometimes maybe you have like a big PDF and you only want students to be working on like three pages of the PDF. You can use a split and merge document tool. Just going to take a moment because I have several slides in this one. And now I can continue to split and merge. And then what that does is it loads up my whole document. I can merge documents. So if I wanted to merge this with another one, so say I had two different PDFs and I just wanna make one assignment, I can pull in another one. 
or in this case, I said that I wanted to just select like three pages. I would just click on my document, press next. And now I could select only the pages that I wanted students to do. So, you know, if I wanted to get rid of this slide, I can just trash it and get rid of it. Um, and I can say whatever pages I don't want published, I can just trash them right here. And then I would export them all and it would make a new Kami file. So that's really nice. Um, so then I can just make another one here if I wanted to even reorder the pages. And this I could save as a whole new file right here. So that's nice. And then the merge mode would be, like I showed here, I could add another document on, add a file from Google Drive, or you can also add it from your, um, just your, my computer. So that's another thing. But split, I know that comes in handy because a lot of times we have like these big PDF files and you're like, just go to page two and complete this. Now you can just pull, select the pages you want. You can even reorder them, drag and drop into the new order that you want, and then you can export it to a, and just open it right in Kami to make a new Kami file. Now I would just have those four slides all done. Oh. Open in Kami. Okay, oh, cool. I we think have, I heard that again. Yep, we have another question. Sorry, I, I, I got dropped for a second there. Uh, might be my bad uh, internet here on the coast. Anyhow, um, another question, and you probably know about this. Um, it seems like they're mixing something with geometry and algebra. It's called GeoGebra. Have you heard of this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, obviously you have. Um, can you open that inside Camry? Is that possible? Um, so like Cam Cammy would not allow any like my answer is going to be no. I don't think that there would be a way to open the GeoGebra directly in Kami um, because again, like Kami's flattening everything, so I wouldn't be able to pull in something interactive that students could interact with. However, if I wanted to make like a worksheet with uh, students, say like on this slide, I want them to interact with the GeoGebra. I could do a comment and I could link them and it would be a hyperlink. I could link them to the GeoGebra that they could interact with. Um, and if I just had like a piece of like, you know, I had made a demonstration and I wanted to be able to mark that demonstration up, I could take a screenshot of that and then pull that in. So I could take a screenshot, pull it in as ad media, and then I could mark it up. Um, so hopefully that answers that question as like some strategies. Yeah, I, I think that answers it pretty well. Another question is about uh, co-teaching. Can can two teachers teach in Kami? I assume they could. If you have, can have multiple students, I assume you can have multiple teachers as well. Yep. And so, like, there isn't a teacher control here either. So that's something to keep in mind. Like, my access isn't really different than my students' access. So um, when I do this, I would just make sure that I shared it you know, had my share settings, right? So if I just want to launch it, me and my co-teacher, and we're the only people that should have annotation features, then I would just want to make sure that my link was, you know, that anyone with the link, can they annotate? Um, oh, I have different features here because I haven't yet saved this to Google Drive. That's why you're seeing a different screen here, which might be confusing. So I should first upload this to Google Drive. That's the first step I usually do. And I Forgot to do that in this case. So now that I've uploaded it to Google Drive, you're gonna see now I have the share settings that I was showing before. And so I would just say, instead, if I'm just want my co-teacher to be able to work with me, I would make it restricted um, access, for example, and then I can change my settings in Google Drive. Um, and you could just right click in Google Drive, share it with your co-teacher like you normally would. Or you can just say anybody with the link can be an editor, and you would only make your co-teacher have access to this link. So hopefully I explained that well, breaking it down one more time. If you want all your students to be able to just view and only your co-teacher to be able to edit with you, then you would have to go with restricted access so that you could change the settings in Google Drive. So you just click this and then you would be able to just add your co-teacher individually as an editor. 
and then everybody else would have viewing. But if you're just having this link um, that, you know, you're just doing a screen share, for example, and you're not giving all your students a link, then you can just make it editing so that just you and your co-teacher would have access to this Cami document. Great, and uh, here's another question from James from Ottawa. Hello, James, we know James. Uh, how does annotate with Cami yeah. fit in when, when opening from Google Drive? Is this what you suggested when opening a PDF or slide deck that is in Google Drive? Yeah, so however it feels easiest to you, honestly, like a lot of times my Google Drive is, um, you know, like I have a lot of files in there. So a lot of times I just go to Cami and then I use the picker tool. So I'll show you what I mean exactly by that. I'm sorry for all the times I've like logged into the screen. <laughs> All right, so a lot of times I just go open from Google Drive and then I kind of have access to all my files here. And if I know the name of it, then I can just find it easily. And it kind of sorts my PDFs. That's a nice too. So PDF, it just pulls all those together. Um, but of course I can just find if my slides that I've been working on. I can find any of them and pull them in. So that's one way. And if you have a PDF on your desktop, the easiest way to do that is to just open from my computer. So if I have a PDF on my computer, I just open from my computer and I select the file. You can also pull in an image, so it doesn't just have to be a PDF. Let me just show you my Google Drive. Just to show you how that works. And I'll also show other so say that i have this pdf file and i want to open it in cami if i'm already in google drive then i can just right click on it so this is another way to do it right click open with and then there we go annotate with cami and at that point it pulls it in so they work identically the two ways just whatever feels easiest to your workflow um, be my recommendation. So the same thing happens if you were to open a Google Doc in Cami. Remember that it like um, PDFs it. So what I mean by that is it's like it's not going to be an editable doc anymore in terms of like you can't edit the Google Doc. Just like I can't edit these Google Slides anymore. It's flattened. It's like a PDF version of it. It's like you printed it and now you can write on top of it. So. Okay, that's very cool. Um, and then uh, another question, um, can one use an older version of PowerPoint with uh, Cami or does one have to have the updated version PowerPoint 365? Um, you could pull in, I think you could pull in anything. Worst case scenario, I would say is that you would have to like print your PowerPoint, you know what I mean? Like you go to print so that you make a PDF uh, version of the PowerPoint and then you pull it in. But I I do not see why you would need to have the most current version of PowerPoint in order to work with this. Okay, great, great. So do you, do you have an idea about how many uh, uh, schools are using Cami throughout the country? I All I know is that there's been a explosion in cami use because i follow them on twitter and they're like oh we got another million users i mean because this has been a tool that's just been so needed especially in remote learning um like how do i even make a worksheet and digitize it now and i, I know that was a solution that many people were looking for and this is a great way but i i hope that our next level is going to be like really how do i pull this into my instruction all the time, even when kids are face-to-face -face in the classroom, because as you can see, like we can do really rich collaboration all in one space, um, no matter where students are. Um, we can use all of these different tools here. And also there's really powerful accessibility tools, which is so important for so many of our learners. So um, 
you know, just keeping that in mind that this has really rich um, accessibility tools to not just the text to speech, but also being able to zoom in to the document, being able to enlarge it for students who might need that, the read aloud tools and the searchability. So we have all this saved. And now when students want to go back for exams, for example, and they're looking for some specific topic, it's all become searchable. So, um, you know, I think there's a lot of power here that we will realize way beyond just this year. Okay, great. Yeah, and that that seems like a good part uh, point to end, Stacy. This has been wonderful. We're at our hour. I don't see any other questions. Um, so uh, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. And I'm sure people were very interested in Cami and learning more about it. And uh, don't forget to attend our summit. Stacy will be at our summit as well. So we're looking forward to that. Um, that's March 18th again. And Stacy, thank you so much for joining us over the last three weeks. We really appreciate it. Thank you all for joining as well. Have a good night. Bye.